because we want to do the right thing for our children and our posterity. Sure. So um, we are the ones who encourage this all to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty exciting because we definitely <laughs> are changing the world, aren't we? Hi, this is Sam Antonio with Liberty News Network. I'm here at the Fox Valley Conservative Forum here in Grand Street, Wisconsin. I am here with our representative that represents this area. Actually, she's my representative here in Grand Street. This is Michelle Litchens. Uh, so glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, this is the first time you're in the assembly. You're a freshman. Yep. And what a great time to be involved in the assembly because you're coming in at tumultuous times yes. here. Uh, I want to take you back. You came here and addressed us as a candidate before you took office and you talked about right to work and you were very ambitious about it. Then we saw what unraveled here in Wisconsin. Uh, I, I just want you to talk about real quick, uh, you, you addressed it here in your talk about the civility, what's happened in the assembly, your thoughts um, of serving there in the first couple of months. Uh, we all know about what happened at the national store, how you were threatened on the assembly floor, and maybe you can talk about that too. I came here with big dreams of uh, proposing right to work legislation mm -hmm. in Wisconsin. Uh, the reality is that if we would not have had so many freshmen coming into Madison this cycle, so many people who are uh, small business owners, people who really just don't want to be politicians, we just want to fix sure. the wrongs in our state, uh, the governor would not have had the strength to do what he did because it was through our strength and courage as newly elected officials mm -hmm. that we said, go governor, go, we've got your back on this, we want to do the right thing for our children and our posterity. Sure. So um, we are the ones who encourage this all to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty exciting because we definitely <laughs> are changing the world, aren't we? Yes. Uh, civility or serious lack thereof. It's it's amazing, uh, it's, it's, it's just amazing that individuals can mistreat others uh, on a very personal level instead of just agreeing to disagree on taxes or education sure. or whatever it might mm -hmm. happen to be. Um, when, I mean, you watched, like you said, you, we, everyone watched this play out nationally. Yes. When it came to the protesters, they yes. just swarmed the building that were bathing in the bathrooms daily. They had uh, uh, tables set up where there mm -hmm. was medical attention, uh, foods. They had their own little store inside the Capitol that was set up. So they kind of, the protesters took it over, and I think that encouraged the Democrats that were still in Madison to um, really say, you know, we're going to run with this on the floor of the State Assembly. There was so much anger. Mm -hmm. So a few times when we had to be escorted out of the Assembly floor or when we were just simply walking upstairs to our caucus, you were surrounded by people who were screaming at you. I mean, you could just feel their heat, but their anger so we were we had police officers lining the stairway to get upstairs to our caucus mm -hmm. room because the protesters were so angry and they were filled with so much hate um, and so my earlier example when this first started after the governor had proposed this idea about our public um, our elected our public employees not being able to collectively bargain mm -hmm. for the most part anymore but when the governor walked in to give his budget address the Democrats sat like this with their backs toward him, with their arms folded. That's never happened before in our state, never. Uh, the Republicans have been in the minority countless times. Sure. They've always stood up and given the, and shaken the governor's hand. So, I mean, that just kind of started the incivility that's been going on down in Madison. And then a few days later, we were on the floor, we were taking up this bill, and that's where I was uh, uh, asked to lead the prayer. Mm -hmm. We start every session with the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. And the Democrats were standing screaming, shouting down my prayer. My prayer, for goodness sakes. So, uh, and the only way you could actually hear that is if you go online. The people who were on the floor could not hear what I said sure. that day. A prayer. You know, I don't know what they were trying to get across that day, especially when they talk about our need for civility in this country. And uh, it was commonplace to be yelled at by them on the floor. You know, we did have um, a representative that's local here who was very angry with a vote, yell at me, I was effing dead, um, <laughs> as I'm sitting scared in my, my seat already. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of the male representatives have said, Michelle, you can't show them that you're afraid. I'm not used to getting yelled at on a personal level. 
we can debate abortion, sure. we can debate taxes or whatever, but on a personal level, that gets a little bit scary. And the, the gentleman right in front of me, who's a police officer actually, was the one who started throwing papers and threw his glass of water where the, the glass hit somebody on the other side, one of the Republicans on the mm -hmm. other side of the aisle, you know, because he was angry with the vote. Um, that is not how an elected official is supposed to behave on the floor of the Wisconsin State Assembly. And that's the difference that we see here is that we, we see, we're seeing this personal anger. It's not against the issues or ideology. It seems like it's more personal, and especially against Scott Walker. We've seen all the stuff that's happened against Scott Walker, the dirt that's been said. And so I think that's what's a little different here. Now, since serving in the assembly, there's a lot of things that's been going on, some of you addressed here. So real quickly, we'll talk about uh, one of them is concealed carry. As you mentioned, Wisconsin is one of two states that doesn't have concealed carry. Now, I'm originally from California. When I found out about that, I was shocked myself. Uh, so California what? Yeah. Has <laughs> now, so what's the sta the status of concealed carry right now? Uh, well, there are two bills going around. One in the Senate, which is a constitutional carry, mm -hmm. and uh, one in the Assembly, which has a permitting process that goes with it. So uh, they're both being discussed. The constitutional carry did have a hearing, but I believe they only have about six senators that support that right now in the Senate. The other bill that's going to be um, introduced in the State Assembly does have a permit, and it has um, some training, but really very minimal. Uh, so I support constitutional carry. I think okay. it's the right thing to do. Um, our forefathers thought that we should have the ability to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. It didn't require any training, just like the right to vote. Uh, but I don't know if we have the support to pass that at this time. Uh, and like I had mentioned today, there hasn't been a state that's passed constitutional carry right off the bat. So I do see us taking what we can get this cycle in two years, pushing it forward and going right through for the constitutional carry. Now, what's the status of voter ID? Uh, Wisconsin has one of the most lenient voting systems in the country. It really is sad. You just have to walk in and, and show um, you know, a utility bill or something and say, oh, this is me, just on the day that you have to register. And then after that, you don't have to show anything. You can say you're anybody to go in to vote. Let me just follow up on that again. I'm originally from California. When I came here to register, I went down to Grand Chute to register. And I'm used to seeing an official form to register to vote. Um, they gave me a form they kind of just printed up, it seems like, right there, and I filled it out, and I asked them, are you going to send me anything to confirm that I'm registered to vote? And he goes, no, just come in when it's time to vote, and you right. can just vote. Yeah, so uh, if we want to preserve the integrity of our voting system in our state, we needed to clean it up. This bill is not cleaning up everything. The bill we voted on would just require a photo ID when you vote. Mm -hmm. uh, now people are complaining this is going to cost us a few million dollars because you can't require an ID and then also make them pay for that. Uh, now most people, 4.5 million people in the state have a driver's license. We only have 3.5 million people registered to vote. So chances are almost everyone in the state has some form of an ID. But if they don't have one and they say they can't afford one, the state will issue one for them for free. Otherwise that's a poll tax and it wouldn't pass constitutional muster. We did pass that and the governor did sign that just a few days ago. So Great. it's not going to start right away. We are going to have some training for municipalities. Mm -hmm. Now municipalities can choose to start requiring a photo ID this summer, but it won't be fully implemented until next year. Now there was sort of a setback in regards to collective bargaining. People may have heard that the judge actually ruled against it right now. So what's the status of that? What are the options to get that back on the table to get it passed? Well, that? First, it is utterly ridiculous that a sitting judge will act solely politically. I mean, the state statutes could not be any clearer. State statute 19.87 mm -hmm. says that if our rules say otherwise, that we don't have to follow the 24-hour open meeting rule. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous that she did what she did, but I think everybody who's involved politically understands that everything in Dane County is politically motivated. Sure. So we anticipated this happening in the first place. Uh, which is why the Attorney General's office said, you can't deal with this issue anymore because you're not dealing with it properly. So they demanded the Supreme Court act on this. They need to have, or they're going to be discussing it on June 6th. Most of our municipalities have said if this is not posted by June 30th, their contracts that they've newly negotiated go out the door. We have to have this done before June 30th. So the reason that a lot of us don't want to take another vote on this is because we've followed the rules. Sure. We've done everything correctly. Thousands and thousands of state statutes have been passed in this exact same manner. So if we now go back and vote on it again, we're kind of giving them the motivation to challenge more things mm -hmm. that we do in this fashion. So, but. 
we do have to have this done within the next 30 days, okay. so we will be voting on it again if the Supreme Court doesn't act on it on June 6th. So just to make clear for our audience and people understand, you know, because they get their news from the, the mainstream media, this was passed through illegal means. Right. Nothing was done behind the scenes. Uh, you, you always hear that it was under the table. They weren't given enough time. This was done through illegal means. It was done, um, you know, there's precedent for it. Right. For this and to I, pass. I think it's important for people to realize the state passed the 24 hour rule mm -hmm. so that your towns and your cities couldn't just decide to get together and pass a rule without the public being notified. Mm -hmm. It in, At the state level, Something needs to be passed by 51 people in the state assembly. Then it needs to go to the Senate to have the majority of the individuals vote on it there. And then it needs to be signed by the governor. Nothing can be done in the dead of night in Madison without other people sure. being made aware of it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's really why that, that law was put in place to, um, in the beginning, and uh, which is why the state isn't held by those rules. Now with the, the retirement of Sen Senator Herbert Cole opening the U.S. Senate seat and another great opportunity for Republicans to take, who do you think would be the leading candidate? Or who do you think in your mind would be the leading candidate to get the Republican nomination for that Senate seat? You know, I don't think we've heard from the leading candidate yet. Mm -hmm. um, I was a strong supporter of Ron Johnson when he first got sure. in last cycle. Mm -hmm. And I think we need someone like that. Mm -hmm. We need someone outside of politics okay. to say, it's my turn as a citizen to step up to the plate and do what's right for our country. I believe that individuals out there, we just haven't heard from them yet. This is Sam Antonio with Liberty News Network. I'm here with Michelle Litchens at the Fox Valley Conservative Forum, and she just gave us a great update. Thank you so much for your time Thank and you. all that you do. Thank you very much later. for putting this on. Here.